Oh, that natural Canadian positivity. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> can't get enough of it. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a surly New Yorker. I can't help it. <laughs> like killer uh, cars. I'm fucking the New Yorker. Were you guys uh, I want to uh, ask us that awkward question or whatever it was? Yeah, well, I, I want to, uh, I'm going to launch us right now into uh, the lightning round because I did hey, something a little bit different uh, for this episode. So this morning I asked Sean to come up with a lightning round question for Blake. <laughs> and I also asked Blake to come up with a lightning round question for Sean. Oh, oh. Okay. so I got, I got questions from Blake and you guys and I responded the same way. So you might have gotten the same answer. I don't know. But go ahead, shoot. Okay. Do I ask him first? Sure. Wh whatever way you guys want. Rock, paper, scissors for it. Uh, honor system. Right. <laughs> uh, okay. right, the weird question is, what <laughs> fictional character did you have a crush on as a child or as a kid? Oh. <laughs> so who's answering, me or everyone here? You. you. I think we should all answer, but I'll go first. Starfire. Uh, I had a weird thing for Rainbow Bright. Uh, Rainbow something Bright. I had a some cartoon. I was like six, and I wasn't like you know like hey how you doing type of thing. But I was like as a six year old, I'm like oh, she seems pretty nice, and I like her dress or whatever. And, yeah, I was very innocently. I had a minor crush on Rainbow Bright. I think that was my sexual awakening. You have had a lot to drink today. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> I have not had nearly enough yet. I, I feel like Rainbow I'm, Bright. I'm basically on the ball, I'm acting like myself, right? <laughs> Yes. Oh All right, who uh, goes next? That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, who who wants to uh, offer theirs? Uh... Oh, Starfire. I had a like, wild crush on Starfire as a kid. Nice. Yeah. You have good taste, man. Yes. Thank you. Blim. Let's have some whiskey. You drink that juice now. Who's next? <laughs> Roman? Steve? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, Man. I gotta go with um, April O'Neil with that yellow jumpsuit. Like, what what's going on underneath that? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I was at a convention in the green room, and I got uh, celebrity green room status once in uh, Rhode Island. And uh, April O'Neil from nineteen ninety, uh, mm -hmm. she came in with her assistant, and I was like at the buffet getting you know hard boiled eggs or whatever. And my spider sense, I was like trying not to stare, but staring. And I'm like, God damn, she looks fantastic. Like she, she kind of looks the same, right? She looks the same. Yeah. And it's okay uh, to uh, age out. But I was like, Jesus Christ, like this is amazing. And I, I had to fight my uh, desire to go over there and be like, hey. <laughs> like, That's right. You want your Batman? No, no, no. This is idea where Joker's the good guy. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, all right, see ya. I think that's your snow flame voice too. <laughs> you look so good in that yellow trench coat. That's the token oh, comic book nerd guy. You can tell what kind of respect I have. Usually, it's, it's either this way to like a super uh, slur, or you can find him to be looked this way too. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on how much I had to drink. Honestly, I've had zero, so I'm totally normal. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, who's next? Uh, well, we know you're uh, not to the point yet of doing your uh, Rob Liefeld, so uh, we got a ways to go. <laughs> go ahead, Robin. Who, who's your uh, uh -oh. comic crush? Uh, Are we doing uh, well, comics I, or what? It was, just, it, it was just... Uh, you know, when, when you were a child and honestly if I had to talk about the first thing that I remember <laughs> I was probably about five years old and in retrospect it seems really weird because it seems like I'm into furries but uh, I don't, I don't uh -oh. know if this show was on in the US or not wait, wait, wait. Maybe you're going to say, no, you're gonna say yeah. Chikara from Thundercats aren't you no I wasn't oh, actually that was that, that's, say that. that's, oh, that's a much cooler one I should have gone with that <laughs> I don't know if this show was on in America or not. I, uh, maybe Blake is the only other person who might remember it. Uh, it was a live action show with Ben Vereen in it. I wasn't attracted to Ben Vereen, but uh, it was called Zoopily Zoo. Zoopily Zoo. <laughs> yeah, it was. So all it was all of these actors. So picture like cats, but like a really budget TV version. So all of these people were. In animal costumes, <laughs> it, oh, like, oh, you know, like singing and dancing kids' songs, and there was this uh, this girl that was uh, dressed as some kind of 
pink cat or something. <laughs> and I, I was probably like five years old, but I was like, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> But I yeah, should have gone with that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh man. So Blake, Blake does not remember that? Is that Blake? No, I don't remember that. I don't It, it was like so it had to be like nineteen eighty five. What was this called again? Zoobly Zoo. Zoobly Zoo. I remember yeah. Fraggle Rock. I don't oh, remember Zoobly Zoo. Oh, well, it was Fraggle as well. <laughs> All right, who, who's next? Grab oh. stuff in. I was gonna say Chitara. Um, if we're if we're gonna go, you know, like the comic cartoon route, I mean, yeah, I do remember also having a crush on Elvira as a young kid. But I mean, she's more like you know, TV. Yeah, I get line, man. Yeah, yeah, and but... that's like still now. Like that's still uh, <laughs> Charles. Still. Uh, she but, was yeah. at a, again. She was at another convention, and uh, she was dressed normally. And I was like, God damn, she's like nice and fit, and so not pleasant and great to her customers. And yeah, she's she's yeah. amazing. I wasn't even an Elvira fan, but uh, after that, I was. She was great. <laughs> so she I'm charges not gonna more to, to be in character at their conventions. Yeah. So her parents' fees are should. just. Yeah, I know. I mean, she she has to wear that wig. She can't even walk outside. She needs a cab to take her from a motel. And it's not because she's uh, high maintenance. It's just legit what it takes to keep that costume uh, up in parallel right. in order to get to the show. She just can't cross the street in a gusty day, you know? <laughs> right, uh, does anyone else want to throw in an answer on that question before, on, we, uh, before we get uh, to Blake's answer? I want to know Blake's answer really yeah. bad. Yeah. Mine was probably my crush uh, around the, the my first crush I can remember was probably Indiana Jones. Oh. I had a thing for Harrison Ford. I think That's it was a from. That's a good choice. <laughs> I think from most like, men here are like that was my first male crush. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That or Han Solo. Guilty. You were like, Guilty. yeah, me too. <laughs> Something about the whip, you know, is just like he's easy. A dorky Damn. guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, everyone. She's allowed to say this. It's okay. All right. <laughs> Be careful. Uh, Harrison Ford will sign your photo on the darkest part so you can't see his signature. <laughs> uh, someone someone here does a really good Harrison Ford impression, if I remember correctly. Uh, uh, snakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like someone asked him well, someone asked him about some Star Wars question about like um is is Princess Leia actually force sensitive? Like you would know better than anyone. And he was like, "Who gives a shit?" <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he's doing la- later year. I don't give a shit. I only wear gray T-shirts and Blade Runner version. <laughs> yeah, uh, Harrison Ford. Uh, did you did you answer by the way, Bad Force Tom? No, I. What was the? Probably guess. you pro- had a crush on Gidget, Gidget from Chip and Dale. <laughs> bestiality <laughs> jesus no no judgment yeah that's right spin that hot shot how did you know <laughs> damn it yeah, I used now, to watch I think, that show, if i if i could remember back probably like rogue from x-men because of the sh- the, uh, the cartoon oh yeah it's probably like the axis did, did it have anything to do with the fact that she had to wear gloves and couldn't touch you? <laughs> yeah. That does make her... But the girl that can't t- touch you, like, literally, it's like, that does make it more of a tease. Like, God damn it, she's so hard to get. Literally, yeah. if I got her, it would kill me. It really <laughs> taps into my social Lord. anxiety and agoraphobia. Yeah. I had a crush on her when Jim Lee drew her. There was an issue where she was hanging out with Gambit, and I was like, man, Gambit's awesome. He's got Rogue. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's that's why everybody liked Gambit. <laughs> it Stop. wasn't the hot pink. Uh, <laughs> it, it's sort of like the uh, the blueprint to being a rock star, right? Like in, back in the '80s, anyway, and like the uh, in the hair metal days, the the blueprint was make the girls want you, and then the guys will want to be you. Totally. Right. Yeah. yeah. By dressing like poison. <laughs> yeah, by, by using like more more hair products than the actual girls. Maybe that's why poison ivy is so uh, desired too, because she also would kill you if you touched her or whatever. Right. Blake, right. do you have any comment on this? You, Blake, please chime in on this. Please straighten us out. <laughs> no, I think there's something to be said for that, and uh, it's the mystique, right? Um, Perfect. You always yeah. want what you can't have, kind of mentality. So yep. yeah, I understand that. Yeah. 
Blake is like, you're on your own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am canceling all of you. <laughs> uh, I, I, I want to take a moment to commend all of us for not once having called you Balake yet. Oh, we, yeah. Uh, we haven't done the Key and Peel joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lake. But um, so that was that. Uh, that was Sean's question, right? No, that, that was Blake's question. question. Yes, that was Balake's question. Now we'll get to <laughs> scenes question. <laughs> scenes. <laughs> well, I had the same one. Just Blake asked me mine, and that's what I said because I thought this was going to be a roundtable discussion. And I was like, this would be a fun topic, which clearly yeah, that, it was. But I don't one. have my own answer. Yeah, that that was what you texted me. So I, I thought that that was your question to her, and I oh. figured you there was a second question. But... All right, That's so cool. we need we need another one then, right? Uh, well, if you don't have to come up with anything on the spot, uh, do we want to roll through some of the typical lightning round questions for for Blake here? Blake, I want to know what's your go to karaoke song. Oh my gosh, oh. it's Brian Adams, "Summer of '69." Yeah, can't do Brian Adams. Fine. What? It would have to be a Canadian, it wouldn't it? It'd have to be a Canadian. You know, can I tell you something? I've only done, I've only sung karaoke one time in my life because I'm a terrible singer, and that was the song that I got to do. And they play it, I guess, a lot on the radio here because Canadian. But yeah, I love that song. It is a great song. It's yeah. a great song. Take off, eh? <laughs> <laughs> What are, what are you talking about? <laughs> I, I don't know if this joke made sense to anyone in the U.S., but what was it, a month or two ago, there was that SpaceX launch, and I couldn't help but noticing every headline that was, you know, like saying Godspeed to these two astronauts that were that were, you know, going up in this shuttle. There were all these headlines, you know, about, you know, we're we're with you, Godspeed to you. And the the astronauts' names were Bob and Doug, so I kept seeing headlines that said "Godspeed, Bob and Doug." Like, what? what do you yeah. know, Moran is guy? Why, why hey, are you hosers? Bob and Doug. <laughs> yeah, so a, a Bob and Doug sounds like something I do to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Tuesday night. I came up with a good uh, question to ask Blake, actually. Oh um, boy. If you had a million dollars and you could hire any artist to draw any book that you were going to write, who would you hire? And awesome. what book would, would it be? I hate it's this really question. Good. Oh, sorry. You don't have to Because there's so many good artists that nope, I admire one. for different reasons, you know? Nope. No, because you're only picking one, and that means all the others you hate. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it. There's too there's many good right ones. Answer. I love so many different artists for different reasons. Um, this is so hard. Well, obviously, I love working with Sean, and he's an incredible oh, stop. artist. Oh, Okay, come on, get get to the real answer. You want to no. hire Adam? You want to hire Adam Hughes? We all know it. <laughs> yeah, actually, I love Adam Hughes as well. He's <laughs> so good. Every there's so many good artists. I can't answer that. Uh, because he's not here, I'm gonna tell uh, an artist related story because uh, Charles is not here with us tonight. Uh, so you know, I can get away with telling the story without him around. So. Uh, a year or so ago maybe it was like two years ago now uh, we had Clay Mann on the show for the first time and there was a point where Clay started talking about how art is, his art is hard for him like he feels that he struggles to to draw more than what he sees other artists do like when he's at a convention or something how it, it seems in his mind that these other artists are just effortlessly creating this beautiful stuff. Whereas when he's creating his, like he feels like he's erasing and fixing and erasing and fixing. And he thinks like he was the only one doing that. So we ended up uh, just on this conversation where we were all throwing out particular pieces of his that looked to us like effortless beauty. Right. And when it came to Charles, he started to, uh, okay, so, well, there was this Batman <laughs> cover that you did that I really liked. It, it was Batman and Catwoman were, were on a <laughs> rooftop, and they were looking down, and the perspective was like the camera was looking up at them while they were looking down over the city. And Clay cuts him off to say, you would be describing an Olivier Coipel cover. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Embarrassing. <laughs> 
Well, tell that was one of my favorite moments oh, ever. That's good. Uh-huh. Tell him to stop drawing like Olivier. No, I'm kidding. I'm friends with both those guys. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny that he knew the exact piece too. Yeah. Well, it's that's funny that, that he recalled it when he came back with Tom King when he on the surprise episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Still Clay talking is, shit on that. Yeah. Clay Who's is very jackass? shy. Clay is shy. For him to fire back that quickly, you knew that he had had this question before. <laughs> And his, what, his... what surprised me the most is what Clay pitched for that second time, like when Tom was coming back on the show, because mm-hmm. Clay texted me and said, hey, what, uh, when are you recording with Tom? Uh, I think uh, the usual, like Saturday at 930 kind of thing. Yeah. And he goes, OK, I want to come on, but I want to be on <laughs> as one of you guys. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, well, this is really out of character, but awesome, yeah, yeah, let's fucking do it. What, what do you want to do? Okay, well, I don't want him to know it's me. Like, okay, well, you're going to have to change your Skype name then, because if he happens to look at the people on the call, he's going to say your name, and whatever you're doing is over before it starts. Yeah. So he goes, okay, I'm going to change it right now, refresh it until you see it change, and let me know if you can still say it's me. And my favorite part about this was that if you don't use a profile picture on Skype, it just uses your initials as your profile picture. Mm. So his profile picture was just CM. So, you know, I'm refreshing, waiting for for Clay's name to change to something else on the screen. And uh, it changes Mm -hmm. to, you know, his his pseudonym. And I look at the pseudonym and it's Crosby, Montana. So first (laughs) of all, it's just a crazy name. (laughs) <laughs> and second of all, it's still the same initials. Uh, it's still CM is, is still his, his profile picture. Like, okay, well, it, and that works. You know, he, he, he won't know it's you and you know, the, whatever you want to do is, is going to work. So the, the day comes and you know, Clay is on the call uh, just as we add Tom. And we, be, we begin the episode. I introduce Clay as, you know, as Crosby, as if he's one of us. <laughs> and we still at this point don't know what his what his idea was and he proceeds to troll the shit out of tom everything he says he said well why did you throw clay man under the bus with that poison ivy cover and yeah, oh man. miller's not that good and just yeah tore him apart. <laughs> and it, it was so awkwardly mean like i'm texting clay while we're talking like oh man this this is so bad he, he's gonna hate us he's never gonna come back on again and eventually Clay has his fill and says, okay, well, you, you can tell him now if you want. And then, <laughs> oh, my God. That so is hilarious. I, that sounds it, it so was, funny. It was one of my favorite things ever. And as soon as I get to reveal, like, okay, I'm allowed to reveal this now. Tom, th- this wasn't real attitude. You know, we, we, we don't hate you. This was Clay Man all along. And Tom goes, I knew it was you because you didn't change your voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. Right. It was also, the same fucking voice. <laughs> Yeah, well, as a guy who used to work for the CIA, I guess, would know that. <laughs> so yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. Oh but my gosh, yeah, that's it, hilarious. It, it did work. Yeah. He was being so nice, too. Like he, yeah. he, like, he was literally shitting on him. And Tom was just <laughs> literally shitting on him. And Tom was like, oh, I, yeah, I mean, you guys, you know, it's your opinion, man. And you get to have it. It's, <laughs> yeah, I respect it. You're a reader and fan. Thanks for checking it out. Fucking oh, my God. Have Sounds you like- done another podcast with Tom since then? I think so, right? Uh, that was like a year. Uh, year. Sure. Yeah. I don't think he's been back on since then, but uh, he and Clay <laughs> are supposed to come back for uh, for the Batcat book, so we'll right. we'll get to revisit that. And I, uh, I if they I, don't get canceled first, yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> sounds like he has a great sense of humor, Clay. That sounds yeah. funny. Oh, so yeah, dry, he, so dry. Yeah, he's, he's, fantastic. he's yeah, he's great. I love Clay. That's and awesome. then after after he uh, after he came back after he revealed who he was, he um. Tom, because he actually asked, "Who's the best? Uh, who's the best artist in comics right now?" And he goes, "I think, I think I have to say Clay Man." And he said that, not really knowing if it was really Clay or not. And then after he was like, he was like, "Oh yeah," and he goes, "I told you you were the best uh, artist in comics." <laughs> and he's like, well, "Why'd you give the first two pages of the last book away to a different artist then?" Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, he, he kept uh, giving it to him. Jorge had done a couple pages, so yeah, he really let him have it about that too. Jesus, um, I'm not, don't get on Clay's bad side. He was like, <laughs> Tom was like, Tom was like, didn't you get the script? I emailed you the script. He's like, yeah, I got to the first page. It said, oh look, another artist. So I stopped reading it. <laughs> oh, and, and, and you don't, you don't reply to my texts anyway. <laughs> it, they were Ooh. literally having a fight on our podcast. It was fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah, so nice. It's good that you we, guys we would never do that to you, of interviews. Like, we would never do that to you. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, Sean, try not to like pretend to be someone else and then ambush me because I'll yeah. be like, what the heck? We definitely Just wouldn't. Would, yeah, we wouldn't do it on the first time you guys are on the okay. podcast. Yeah. The third that's time. not actually. That's not actually Blake. That's actually Scott Snyder doing a Canadian professional <laughs> <Yeah. impression laughs> surprise. <laughs> For an hour and a half, that's fucking great. He put that yeah, on. He's, he's he's a what's it called when you're a me- he's method. <laughs> Shit, yeah. With the boots and everything. <laughs> the boots. <laughs> Blake, what's your favorite type of M and M? Do you have peanut, yeah. regular, almond, peanut butter? You got to include peanut butter. Uh, mint. Caramel. Mint. I yeah, had at that big M and M store. There you go. In Times Square, I had a mint one, and it was freaking the bomb. That is totally street. Yeah, it was good. Okay, I guess we'll let that one go. Okay. But Blake, when you pick a when you're going out for the night, do you pick like a quiet, nice restaurant or someplace that's loud and has more action? Hooters. Quiet, quiet. <laughs> quiet. Yeah. yeah. Me too. <laughs> you think I'm a crazy party animal, don't you? I know you I do. I don't. <laughs> Yes, you well, do. I know that you 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 flirt with that persona online, but I know in real life you're not, because you and I both like the same quiet places and quiet diners. We sit in the corners. I mean, we were yeah. hanging out a lot, like three days straight. We pretty much liked the same things. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, that's what I'm like. I'm pretty damn to earth. I'm <laughs> I got a good one for Blake. Yeah. Disney World or Disneyland? Oh my god. I'm a huge Disney freak. I just went to Disneyland for the first time in my whole life last year. And it was amazing. But I tend to go to Disney World. uh, Because I've been going for the past couple of years with my kids. And I'm just turning into a crazy Disney nut. Yeah, I have a great time there. And I love Disney World, I think because there's, you know, you get to see Epcot and um, you know, I just did Animal Kingdom for the first time this year. So, yeah, I'm a huge Disney. Did you stay at Mar-a-Lago? Mar-a-Lago? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> if Blake, if, if, uh, who's the most overrated Disney princess? Oh, gosh. Uh, wow. Overrated. Oh, hmm. this is going to get some hate. Yeah. Oh you're... no, you know I thought it would be an easy answer. I didn't. There's a lot of them. First of all, I can just tell you which one I like the best. My favorite yeah. is Belle because Beauty and the Beast was always my favorite Disney movie, mm-hmm. and I just love yeah. her the best. So Munchausen no, syndrome. Yeah. You said earlier, no stuck in a book, which is literally a line from uh, Beauty and the Beast. So exactly. that's my wife's favorite as well. Is it? Love... Yeah. Yeah. She Gaston. Gets... Gaston's a great villain too because he makes fun of people for reading. Oh. Gosh, this is hilarious. <laughs> I, I Crazy think, uh, old Maurice, huh? Yes. I think according <laughs> to my according to my wife, I think Snow White is the most overrated. She's a big Bell fan, but she doesn't like Snow White because she's yeah. not like liberated. So yeah. yeah. How's she well, not liberated? Uh, because she relies on like these seven old men. She <laughs> just, you know? So she hates her with a passion. Yeah. My, my four-year-old daughter sleeps with Ariel every night, so you're okay <laughs> with me. Yeah. It, was, it was close, but you survived. Well, Ariel's half fish, so you're like half yeah. bestiality if you're hooking up with Ariel. <laughs> oh, but it's only the bottom half. Uh, dude, by the way, guess what? You know what I just learned? Ariel is 16, bro. Oh. oh. That's yeah. true. Well, that just got weird. So. <laughs> um, Blake, so are you like a Disney parks freak or like a disney freak in general um right now it's more the parks and yeah. my kids have kind of outgrown the the movies a little bit so when they were younger i was watching a lot more of them um but i also like uh universal studios i got into the whole um going there for a couple years which was really fun the rides there are incredible but yeah the disney parks i guess are what i really enjoy i just love disney <laughs> It was fun. It's they, they know how to uh, they know how to like uh, capture some that essence and uh, I mean you feel like you're like I, and I say this in a positive way. I don't know if it's a positive way, but you feel like you're a member of a cult, like and and they yeah. they respect <laughs> you and like you're 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 meant to be there, you know. So I can understand why people like being members of cults because it's like this place is always there. It's warm. It's inviting. Everything's familiar. Everyone's so friendly and like nice, you know, and always wanting get to COVID. Help. Everybody you get COVID. Yeah. 
Well, gosh, hopefully not. Yeah, they well, just, they opened, just opened, it. opened up yeah. Disney World. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Florida's hot. It's crazy. Yeah. I I love that uh, Scott used to work at Disney. Oh, that's right. I don't know. I don't remember which it was. Scott Snyder. He was like uh, one of those guys. Like he was in like the Prince Charming suit or something like that. He really? Buzz Lightyear. Like, he was. Yeah, he was. <laughs> He was a character you. actor in the because my wife is the same thing. My wife played Ariel uh, oh, wow. nice. for a bit. Nice in yeah. Florida. In Florida, yeah, she was a photographer, and they needed she fit the role, and they needed her in a pinch, so she did it. And Scott told her this over dinner. He's like, "Oh my God, I was Prince Charming or whatever." Because <laughs> you had <laughs> to have the right height. You couldn't be too yeah. tall or too short. You had to be like a rock set basically you know and, and yeah. the, the the way i guess it works uh like the the path that scott went through is you like graduate up through different levels of characters <laughs> you know you get to be more prominent characters he he right. started out like being a dwarf of course that's for sure <laughs> i haven't been to disney world yet i'm, I'm waiting to sell my murphy verse books so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the trip. I, gotta, I gotta wait another 15 years yeah right after you sell those uh death of superman issues <laughs> for the big books <laughs> yeah right Man. yeah i have a uh, i have a short stack that i was thinking about selling i got like first appearance at deadpool and i'm like do i do if i do a sketch on this does it is it worth more because it's from like my personal collection or whatever. Like I don't know how the rules work because I've never drawn Deadpool officially, so I don't know if that would just hurt the value or what. Well, well it, I, I can tell you, it, it would either result in Rob Liefeld praising you or blocking you. <laughs> well, yeah. he, he would be so mad at you. <laughs> Why? Just remark, selling a. Right? Um, yeah, remarking a book and selling it, and what if I gave it to charity? He couldn't be mad at that, right? Yeah, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to give the charity. <laughs> that would still huge if you like. It's your it's your book from your collection, yeah. and you're doing a remark on it. That would totally sell. Okay. For on eBay, or, yeah. All right, good to know, guys. There's there's <laughs> like there's those there's collectors out there who like they would be more willing to get that because you haven't done this is like your only Deadpool work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. it's it's your Deadpool on your Deadpool book. So it's like, yeah, you, it's pretty pretty rare. Well, so I did a. a three star wars pieces uh once thinking this will sell it's my people plus star wars fans and i had a hard time selling those like my people are into batman and sometimes cars they're not into star wars i found that i had yeah i did not have the overlap that i thought i did um interesting yeah so i don't know what it is so there's certain places that i i I, I think you should try to get you know maybe the timing is off did you have jeff with you at the time (laughs) yeah i did yeah, yeah, he wasn't. You blaming him for why it didn't sell? No, I'm saying I'm like it's just in, it's interesting that people wouldn't bite. It's like yeah, because I've done. Uh, is... I did a, 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 a Jeff has. I did like two nude pieces once, just as character studies, and those those sold so fast because I don't tend to draw that stuff. And these pervy guys from France love that <laughs> shit, you know. And I have pervy. I mean, they're big supporters of mine, so I probably shouldn't call them that. But it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. So if I ever it's get cancer and have a year to live, you're going to start seeing me draw a bunch of, like, straight-up comic book <laughs> porn and dudes. selling it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's interesting a- uh, what crossovers you can do, because I think that uh, RoboCop piece that you did uh, oh, moved pretty yeah. well. I, yeah, I had to pick one of those well. up for, for Tom when you were in Detroit. Yeah, dude, oh. I needed that one. That we'll start sold. seeing rainbow brights and yeah. the, the <laughs> chitaras and yeah, rainbow bright chitara gets you team up. Hey, bro. Finally. <laughs> Gadget, hey Sean, I did want to ask: uh, Is it weird for you, or is it? Is it? <laughs> I just... love where this is going. Go ahead. Well, okay, <laughs> I, I'm just gonna say this. You know, the White Knight verse, yep, has spawned so much. You know, quick turnaround with merchandise and action figures I, I know we talked about that before but they just hit a new wave with the uh, six inch action figures from mcfarland mm-hmm. and usually those don't come out for like years after a, a book run or something like that and yours are like hitting like a year after that title yeah he he told me that he was making this deal with dc that wasn't announced yet and he wanted to launch big with white knight and i'm like if i'm flattered like yeah. Put me in a put me in a time machine. Go back to 1991. Tell tell my 11 year olds this is amazing. Um, and yeah, he's like he's like, well, I really like you to do some uh, Spawn. I don't do very good Todd impression. 
And uh, he's <laughs> like, why, I really why, don't, why don't you do some spot? I mean, we can do some spot. <laughs> why not? What's wrong so with when, spot? When he said that I'm thinking about doing figures, I thought that he was like uh, trying to tease the possibility of action figures if I agreed to do spawn. And I'd love to do spawn, but I was swamped, and I, even if I wanted to, I, I couldn't. And uh, I know Todd. I don't know him well enough to know if he would like, like pretend to do figures. But then two days later, I get screenshots of actual figures. So uh, I guess I was the asshole for doubting him. <laughs> wow, that's yeah, fucking. Crazy. I couldn't believe how quick they turned around. Just yeah. so you know, when they first announced, when 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 ah, you know, Todd started showing pictures of all his toys that he's doing with the Batman. Finally, we get <laughs> Batman, we get Catwoman, we get we can finally get yeah. a new Joker. Oh, get it, what are you talking about? I love doing this stuff. I've been wanting to for years. Obviously, so. When they first started doing the Batman stuff, I remember, okay, this is going to be pretty cool, right? But then, like, the first wave came out, and, um, you know, I wasn't that impressed, to be honest. I was like, okay, they look kind of cool, like, $20 figures, all right, they don't look bad. But then when yours came out, your wave, they're the best one so far, easily. Dude, so that, that Asriel especially, like, I've never seen an Asriel figure that looks so good. Yeah. Just the way that they render, because I, I rendered a bunch of gobbly gook on his belt like it's just a bunch of scratches and fingerprints like i i purposefully leave it nebulous and the sculptor went in he's like no this is a cross crucifix this is a belt this is a dagger and like the amount of sense he made out of my 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 crazy line work it's just insane yeah. like Sean, yeah that's that's Sean, that's the one i opened fucking, up first the the nerds love it like the action figure reviewers yeah love these figures oh, I'm glad. in particular asriel yeah. You know, and yeah. Ezreal, I thought he was a bigger deal than he was. Like I said last time, like I thought I, when when the big reaction I got to Ezreal with most people was like, "Who's Ezreal?" He's been kind of off the table for a while, and like I'm sure Blake remembers too, like reading that stuff in the '90s or whatever. Like Ezreal was all over the place, so I thought when I did it, this would be a cr crowd pleaser. But a lot of people were like, "Yeah, that guy." I don't know. So yeah, I'm really glad that people dig the figures, though. Yeah, they. Uh, I, I think it's just a mix of. Maybe like the sculpting that they did, plus your style, just meshed really well. But right. it's it's per the two the two kind of styles kind of combined perfectly because, like they even came out with some of the other that they announced with pictures like um some of the um like the Grim Knight or there's a couple other ones but metal. I was like yeah. the metal stuff and it was like okay yeah. it looks all right but your stuff is like Spot. by far so far yeah. has been the best. That's yeah, great, that man. Looks awesome. Yeah, no, yeah. I actually, I heard, I don't know if Blake's allowed to talk about this, but I know that she's working on an action figure for Snowflame. It's actually made out of <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. Blake, are you, allowed to, are you allowed to talk about that, Blake? No, I'm not allowed to talk about that. <laughs> That's ounces? top secret. <laughs> don't, do not try to smell this figure when you open it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's not like a scratch and sniff. You just blew the that, door off of those, this, the whole smuggling ring she was trying to get going, dude. I know. Like, the Colombian <laughs> cartel was suddenly buying a lot of uh, McFarland toys, of oh. the Snowflame in particular. <laughs> but you I can't wait place. to get the Blake Northcott Catwoman from the White Knight universe when that Ooh. story gets written and then yeah. it gets... I heard it's See what I'm saying here? This is where I'm leading up to. Yeah. Very, very subtle. Good job. Subtle. <laughs> Loved it. But uh, I, I'm glad that we did get that iteration of Azrael and it was received so well and, you know, got received. this great figure because it it looked for a long time like a lot of people were looking for an avenue for Azrael. Like I, I know of a couple other artists who had been looking for a way to work him into something. Um, mm. Yeah. A few years ago, uh, Dave Finch had been in the comic shop I work. Like he's, like, Dave is one of our locals, and yeah. he had come in and he just randomly picked up uh, a set of sort of Azrael, like Azrael's first appearance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, mm, "You planning to to do some research with that?" And he said, "Maybe." <laughs> and I said, yeah. "Like you know, slot." Like so, I I feel like a few people had been trying to find an avenue to do something with him yeah I and mean, it's been usually you have like 20 year delay windows so like i was a huge spider-man 299 fan and i was 20 years later i'm now the age where i could push that book to get drawn perhaps and then of course they they did it anyway but usually you find like every 20 years the stuff that you loved as a kid well now you're old enough to buy that for your kid so you start to see sp spikes happen every 20 years and with Azrael, I knew we were approaching that 20-year mark because it was like 1995, so 2005, 2015. So I knew, like, all right, someone's probably going to pounce on Azrael soon. It's time for him to be reinvented by somebody that loved it as a kid, like me. So that's why I was so happy to snag him before anyone else did. 
Um, and like I said, I checked first and they were shooting him into space. So I'm like, all right, well, you guys seem to <laughs> don't seem to have a plan. So that works. So I'll just, and I, I, you know, the, the ego in me really wanted people to say like, man, this is the best Azrael story in 20 years. Cause no one's really done a proper homage to him. Even though I took a lot of liberties and changed a few things, I really hoped to win over that Azrael hardcore fan. Um, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I'm glad the figure turned out too as uh, well as turned out well as well. Yeah, sorry, I'm losing my voice. <laughs> if uh, if you ever speak to Todd again about expanding the line, I would love to see Azrael in the bat suit as a figure. That would yeah, as bat. Yeah. Yeah, I imagine like, if they that, sell, Todd's gonna want to come back and do a Harley version. Uh, oh, for from, sure. Yeah. Maybe the book oh. my wife is doing, um, the Asbat suit. And uh, well, what I did was basically what uh, Mike mainly designed back in the 90s, too. So, mm. no, I mean, are you kidding me? I would love to, especially it hardly sounds like hotcakes. So, I'd love to do it. Is that oh, a yeah, Mike mainly impression? You know, you, you, know you, you, you got to do Batmobiles, too. You know, every figure comes with a piece of a Batmobile. You know, you put them all together, you know, for the big boy, you know, you can draw a Batmobile, you know, uh, you know. I hope, I hope that you I'm, I'm sure. This. Blake feels this way too. I hope I don't have a particular way of speaking that's easy to ape <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, no. I hope I don't have any ticks that you guys can pounce on. You're like tough. That. You're tough, just like uh, Snyder's tough. Okay. Yeah. I say yeah. uh, a lot, and I lose track of what I say sometimes. And sometimes I tweet dumb things. So have fun. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, you know, if if Todd could do a um a White Knight Batmobile too, that would be insane. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. That's all. I, that's what I said to to XM Studios. Like, I don't know if you guys do diecast, but I don't know if you could make this happen as well. But because I keep pushing it at DC, and the, they, you know, they want inexpensive, low risk toys that they can sell. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure at some point they'll get around to it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, that's really my end goal is when I can get a uh, 118 scale version of my Batmobile with like moving parts and all that. That's when I'll have yeah. made it. Quote unquote. <laughs> Blake, if you had a figure or statue made of any of your stuff what would you like it to be oh goodness uh something cool from my uh north valley grim war book for sure because there's like magic in that so they have a bunch of really neat sigils which are like magical symbols that are on uh their guns oh, cool. and instead of shooting bullets that shoots like magic out of you know the gun yeah. so i think that would be really cool to make something like that um, I don't know. I don't know a lot about about the figures and all of that. So yeah, <laughs> but that sounds really neat. I like the idea though of having yeah, like the uh, the White Knight uh, Batmobile or something. That'd be cool. Do you do you collect uh, Funko Pops or anything like that? Yeah, I have a lot of Funko Pops. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell if like my guess is with Blake, if you have very little nerd things around your house or. <laughs> Actually, in the process Some. right now of redoing my uh, office, which okay. so I'm thinking in the next month, I'm I've had a bunch of fans actually say, "Oh, I'd love to see you know like what kind of comics you have and books and funky like yeah, yeah Funko pops and stuff like that." So I'll do like a tour. You know, how you did a tour of your house and your space. Yeah, I'll probably do that and showcase like you know what nice. my office looks like. Yeah, I'd love to see stuff. it. I have a lot of nerd stuff, so <laughs> there's a lot to show off. Do you have like your own? Well, I assume you work at your home. Yes. But you have like your own little private office, and that kind of have things that get you in the in the mood to write. Yes. So mostly it's a lot of books. I have a ton of books around me all the time. It makes me feel homey. Like I'm in a library. Like I said before, I'm kind of a dork. So <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of books. Like not just you know uh, novels and fiction, but like how to write um how to manuals and like a ton of graphic novels comics i have like just lots of paper around me all the time that's awesome. i have to imagine that you know and sean you probably know this too writers and artists probably spend more time researching than actually making the story is that <laughs> do you find that to be true or do you, do you just go off in your own you know world yeah. and, and create something yeah, I don't know. Well, for me, because I draw it too, I'd say probably not, because the drawing is super labor intensive. Um, but if I was just writing, um, I don't know. Blake, do you do you work? Yeah, 
more hour for hour research than writing? How does that work out? Uh, I do a lot of research. I, <laughs> especially if I'm coming up with, uh, let's say, so the first book in a new series, uh, like with my North Valley Grimoire series, I was kind of switching to a different genre where I was getting into magic and I was kind of getting out of superheroes more into magic. So mm -hmm. I had to develop like a whole system of how is this magic going to work and how is this going to make sense for the universe I'm creating? Um, and now like for something when I'm doing something like with DC for Catwoman, I was researching a ton all the way back to the very first uh, appearance of her. You know, I wanted to get mm -hmm. a bunch of different perspectives from all the different writers who have mm -hmm written her over the years and so yeah research for me is a kind of a big part mm. of what I do but I enjoy that also I really like to dig into all of that so for yeah. me it's not like a chore I just I love it so in Catwoman um Blake created a, a two new characters yeah. one is a, a giant panther or is it a jaguar Blake I forget uh you said it was a melanastic jaguar right jaguar is yeah it was called yeah I forget, but yeah, that sounds yeah. like me. Yeah. <laughs> and the other one is a giant coca, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, and, uh, the, the jaguar is also a coca head. <laughs> well, actually, and, uh, we, go ahead. Yeah, we uh, came up with a, another kind of villain that was going to be sort of maybe like a nemesis to um, uh, Catwoman, and it's a this uh, character called Tambra Quartz and she was so much fun and she's like the incarnation of an evil Instagram influencer who's kind of gone mad mm. I see that every day I wanted something a little bit more uh, grounded in like reality and you know what we see every day so writing villains is like the best thing ever you have this lunatic who is jealous of Catwoman it was yeah. just so fun it's tough because when you have a comic you're really limited with your real estate and mm -hmm. you can only do so much dialogue you know when you want to have extended conversations and such yeah. but I think her verbal sparring matches with Catwoman uh they really turned out very well so I'm super yeah. excited for people to be introduced to Tambra Court yeah that's one of your your uh best abilities as a writer is to get sharp cutting dialogue usually between two women who don't like each other <laughs> I find that's when you really shine <laughs> yeah I mean I love dialogue uh but you know I learned a lot in this uh being doing these issues and I think that Sean you were really like instrumental in teaching me you know a little bit about um you know pacing we were talking about the opening scenes and everything and uh you know I I think you're a really great teacher so oh, thanks I, I a lot of what you said to heart and put that yeah. into the script and I, th I think it's it weird because like I, I feel weird I felt I think I felt out of my element because I'm not a trained writer I'm not like a real writer I I, I know that I did White Knight but I honestly and this isn't me looking for uh you know a pat on the back but I, I generally don't think of myself as a traditional writer like you are so when I talk to writers like you I just assume like you know, you're working in a library, you've been reading, you've been reading way more books than me, you have more experience writing the publishing, and I'm kind of like, uh, just the guy that sort of busted his way in the last few years. So for me to tell you, or any writer what they should do, to me, I feel like it's not my place. So I sort of wanted to give you kind of what I thought. And then if you wanted to over yeah. roll me and do something else, that's cool, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I think you're in a unique position as well, because uh, artists who are able to be the artist and the writer on a book, I feel yeah. like you have a di different level of being able to conceptualize what is going to happen. Yeah. Uh, being just a writer, I can't, you know, I can't envision it, like, because I can't draw it the way you mm. can. So yeah. that's frustrating. So to hear, you know, your ideas about where to take the action scenes or those beats yeah. uh, that was helpful for me. So yeah, no, I learned a lot. And with two issues too, I mean, it's, it's yeah. barely, barely enough to, I mean, you, you have a, a very, very short story and it's not even, you can't even get into like a proper three X structure structure with two issues. So yeah, uh, yeah I'd love to see more you ideas back. for, for expanding it, but you know, we got two, which is still great and I'm excited, yeah. About it, but yeah, there is only so much you can do in two, but yeah. Yeah. Sean, did, was, not was there any compliment a Canadian? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hard to compliment a Canadian. Yeah, it's, no, it's torture. <laughs> oh, Blake, uh, was there, was... I feel like I've known her forever, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Blake, was there any particular uh, influence or inspiration for including uh, a Jaguar character into the story? Uh, well, when Sean and I had first, uh, you know, brainstormed ideas, that was something that we both felt like we wanted to just have i think 
I forget what we were talking about. Maybe we were talking about like Crocodile Dundee or something. What were we talking about? <laughs> yeah, I forget. It did come up. I, I, so I, my, in my head, I thought, let's get Catwoman back to her roots. Yeah. And get, and get entwined with an actual jaguar. And she's in the jungle. She's getting away from Gotham and Bruce Wayne and the drama. And she wants to just like remember what it's actually like to be a cat. And right. she's there to steal a diamond, of course, which is her mo. But along the way, she finds another cause, and she ends right. up um, making decisions differently. And uh, the cat affects her. And so does the cat's childlike uh, companion, this little girl who's wearing, right. uh, she's like kind of a cat girl fan. Is that a mm -hmm. right way to say it, Blake? Yeah. So you have Catwoman with like a literal cat, and then you have her with a child who's a girl. So you have her in like this motherly role. And I thought there was a lot to chew on right there. Um, I'd love to have seen it expanded into like six issues because I think we only got to scratch the surface. But that was why I threw Jaguar at you, just because I thought it would be a cool departure from what we're, we normally see. Right. Um, I think the editor actually said, what if she goes to an island yeah. or something like that? So that was Jessica, our editor's idea. So that, that was helpful. Yep. But what did you name the one... jaguar? I forget. What was the jaguar's it's name? Kissin, which it means you... god of death. Okay. Oh. That's yeah. what you came across in your research, I'm guessing? Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Is the Kissin a literal jaguar, or is it a ghost or a spirit, or are you not allowed to say? Well, I think that between what we ended up writing and how the art was kind of influenced, we ended up deciding that it became kind of more of like a mythological right. um, creature of the island. That's cool, yeah. Yeah, which I really liked how that turned out. And yeah. I think, you know, it was a... Yeah, it was super fun to write, and I think that everything worked out really well and it came together. I'm super, right. like, I'm just so excited and proud of it, and I'm really <laughs> thrilled, and I can't wait for people to read it and to get feedback and hear what everyone thinks. Yeah, me too. Especially during COVID. Like, I'm not even sure what sales are right now. Yeah. What's even fair to gauge? Like, what is buzz in comics even mean right now when so many shops aren't open? So, right. Yeah. <clears throat> I actually just went to my local shop for like the first time in three months. And, yeah. you know, it was, it was interesting. Uh, there weren't as many people there that yeah. um, normally see, but I also kind of went at a, a later times too. But, yeah. um, right. They yeah, seem to be open like, where I live. So. That we sort because my book ended the last strong Wednesday, normal Wednesday we had was the final issue of curse. Um, so my numbers dipped a little bit because people were starting to wig out about the virus. And then we skipped, you know, four months now. And luckily, Blake's book is coming out just as we're kind of trying to open up at least. So I hope I hope it's a, a good sign. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, asked, I actually wanted to say, uh, piggyback on what Sean said, right when the virus hit, um, my local comic shop delivered the last issue of uh, Curse of the White Knight to everyone's doorstep. So I was like. Oh, I sweet. felt so fortunate to have like a physical copy because yeah. I know the week before you were kind of prepping for everyone to kind of potentially getting on, on digital. But yeah, I think that like just made the cusp, you know, and the fact that I got the yeah. last issue, I yeah. felt really great that, you know, I can kind yeah. of this series. Yeah, you know, I'm not uh, sure. I don't know how well it sold in the final issue because it got dinged by the COVID stuff. And um, I've heard people tell me that because I think Walking Dead was coming out too, and I might have beat out Walking Dead, but no one had strong numbers. That you know, yeah. it's like so. I've been I was telling DC like, please don't judge me for these numbers. Like, judge me against all the other numbers. Even with Blake's book, I'd say to DC like, you know, I don't know what the new scale is for success during COVID, but you've got to take that yeah. into consideration. Like, yeah, it's I mean, no book is going to be a knockout right now. It's just the way it is. So hopefully they can see the writing on the wall with uh, with Blake's talent. You know, exactly. Oh, thank you. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm excited. I just hope that people get to read it. Yeah. Well, we will. Uh, everyone will have the chance to read it as of uh, July 15th. Uh, probably by the time you're hearing this, it is uh, going to be now Wednesday, and it will be in shops. Get out and pick it up. Let Blake and Sean know uh, what you think of it. Make sure you're following Blake on Instagram, Twitter. Where else are you? Facebook and yeah. And YouTube. Oh, yeah, you too. Oh, you too. Yep. Cool. Nice, guys. Well, thanks again for having us. I appreciate uh, the support, as always. Thank you so much. This is always thank fun. Thank you for coming on. Well, thank, thank you guys you. so much. Thank it you. was so great. I really appreciate you guys. Yeah, it was a pleasure, guys.
Hey, we well, want you to know that we appreciate you and totally support you guys. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank that you means so a lot. much. Yeah. It's this a, was such a wonderful introduction to great job. Uh, great job. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. Crap, to get all... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that does. Uh, I think uh, we let uh, Blake go to bed now, awesome. and uh, Sean go back to lifting weights. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> I think, uh, guys, I think I think I'm sober now. Can we record? Oh, nice. <laughs> Everything was just all over. Hey, Gotham dwellers, make sure to stop everything right now and subscribe to Bat Force Radio. We can be found on iTunes and SoundCloud. Don't miss out. Guaranteed to satisfy all of your Batman and DC needs.